everybody. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody <laughs> to <laughs> uh, Leistritz's uh, webinar discussion on screw pumps and all asphalt. I'm Kim Robbins and I oversee marketing for Leistritz. And I'd like to thank you for taking uh, the next, well now we'll, we'll say 25 minutes <laughs> or so to learn about the asphalt L2 pumps in action. Joining me today is John Quigley. John has been our national sales manager for the past five years. He's a graduate of Villanova where he studied mechanical engineering. He's a huge fan of their sports programs and college sports in general. He has his MBA from Fairleigh Dickinson and he's been involved with pumps and pumping systems for 25 years. When he isn't working with customers on the asphalt pumping system, you can find him at the Jersey Shore. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar. We'd like these sessions to be interactive. Please use the question area on the dashboard and we are recording this so uh, that you can review or send to a colleague. So I'd like to hand it over to John. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us to discuss using screw pumps for asphalt applications. I know these are crazy times, so we really do appreciate you making the time to join us. I want to start off by giving you a very quick overview of Leistrich's advanced technologies. The company, founded by Paul Leistrich in Nuremberg, is a manufacturer of turbine blades for steam turbines in 1905. So we've been around for a really long time. 1924, we developed our first screw pump. Modifications to the screw pump design enabled us to create extrusion machines for polymers in 1937. In 1973, the American Leistrich Corporation was founded mainly for customer service and sales support. The Leistrich Corporation was formed in Allendale, New Jersey, where we are today, as the U.S. subsidiary of Leistrich AG in 1986. And in 2014, Leistrich Corp combined with Leistrich Extruder to create Leistrich Advanced Technologies Corporation, or LATC. Now, LATC is made up of four divisions. We have the screw pump division, machine tools, turbine blades, and extruders. Just to give you a quick agenda of what we're gonna to discuss today, uh, we'd like to focus obviously on pumping asphalt. Our presentation is going to focus on the many challenges that come up when pumping asphalt. We want to discuss the current systems that are available, which leads us to the difference in technology and the features and benefits of using, in our case, a screw pump. We would like to finish up with a couple general case studies that we're able to take advantage of those features. Asphalt, as you know, has many challenges. Pumps are required at every stage of asphalt production and up through its supply chain. Whether you are starting at refineries and moving to terminals and then hot mix plants or even roofing manufacturing plants, you'll need a pump to move the product. We have all experienced the challenge of temperature controlling <clears throat> the product, <clears throat> excuse me, and the challenges in viscosity of the material at different temperatures. Constantly loading and unloading the asphalt, getting it to the right temperatures, and making sure it is done in a fast possible way. Speed is of the essence. Lastly, because of the variations in temperature and the properties of the asphalt, we can get slugs on the suction side and plugs down the line on the discharge side. All of these create challenges and issues for the pump. Okay, let's start with the asphalt terminal where the current standard pump used is the gear pump. The main applications in the asphalt terminal are unloading, where you have rail cars, trucks, or marine vessels such as barges. Once there, the asphalt very often is transferred from one tank to another. Circulation of the asphalt is also done to maintain product temperature. And lastly, the loading of trucks, marine vessels, and rail cars 
is done to, more, to move the product to market. We would like to show you how the L2 series screw pump offers some significant advantages over the gear pump. All right. So <clears throat> before we move forward, we're going to do a very quick poll just to see what everybody is uh, is using today, so that you know if John can uh, change how he is talking about the pump to really make sure that he is. Uh, giving you the right type of information for what you're doing. Okay, you can see that most of you are voting. Give me just another second. And what we're gonna do is just share. So just, um, just so everybody, I'm gonna close the poll. You can, you can see the results, um, or maybe you can't, I'm sorry, but 29% of you use screw pumps, 57% use gear pumps, 14% of you use both. So uh, there's really a great mix of products that people are using or pumps that people are using. So uh, thank you for that. It gives us a good feel for what everybody's doing out in the field. Okay, thank you, Kim. Hey. Okay, next I just want to give a quick overview of the gear pump and also the screw pump. Uh, basically, what we have here is that we have suction coming in on, the, uh, on this side of the gear pump, your suction port, and then it comes out on the pressure port. Uh, you have your drive gears and your idler gears, and um, basically right in here too would be if in some cases, there's uh, wear plates that are necessary uh, for the gear pump. The Leistrich L2 two-screw pump has a single bearing and a single seal. This is, uh, has two screws. It's hard to see the second screw here, but it also gives you the flow path of the fluid, which comes in through the side and then up through the screws and then makes another turn and then comes out through the discharge. There we go. Uh, I wanted to give you a uh, brief specs on the L2 pump itself. The flow rate uh, is up to 2000 gallons per minute. Uh, the differential pressure is up to uh, 250 PSI. The viscosity is up to 20,000 centistokes and temperatures up to 545 degrees. Now, um, I'd like to give you a little video of the actual operation of the L2. It's moving. Okay. The basically, let me just stop it here a second. The L2 that we have shown here is a standard unit. Uh, it does not have the pressure relief valve on the top of the unit. Uh, it has a single mechanical seal. In some cases, you could also have packing, uh, but this is just a standard unit to give you the flow path. We also have jacketed units uh, for steam or oil heating. Uh, this does not show that in this case. Okay. Um, and again, and this has no timing gears and there's only one bearing. It's an external bearing. Uh, one of the things that's very important on the unit is the flow path uh, when dealing with asphalt. As you can see, it's coming in through the suction side, which is in blue, gets turned to the back of the pump, which is a very important process that we'll talk about later, especially when dealing with slugs. It comes through the pump, actually up through the screws, and then goes out towards the discharge, turns again, and then goes back out through the discharge. Okay. So you could actually see the uh, flow path of the unit. Now, one of the things that's very important 
uh, with the screw pump is the internal recirculation. And what it does is it causes the pump to become hydraulically balanced. Now the balanced rotors, uh, the balanced rotor set eliminates internal thrust. So there is no need for wear plates like you have on the gear pump. And you can see that here. What we're showing here is a single mechanical seal. The single seal, and now in this case, it, for asphalt, it could also be packing, is subject to inlet pressure only. This will cause less leakage when using uh, packing uh, for the system. Oops. Sarah, okay. And again, here are the specs of the unit, which we went through earlier. And that gives you an, an idea of the flow path of the L2 pump. Okay. Some other features of the unit are that it, it unit will normally come in when using asphalt with a full flow integral relief valve with hand wheel. If there is a problem in the discharge line of a valve is mistakenly closed down line, um, the pressure relief valve will circulate 100% of the flow back through the pump. Uh, the units are available with integral heating jackets to regulate the pump's fluid temperature. And the casing is made of ductile iron or it can be provided in carbon steel. This image shows the packing area for the unit and also the pressure relief valve that would be mounted on top with the hand wheel. Okay, now we're going to get into some of the features of the L2 pump package. The pump is directly connected to the motor. There's no gearbox. So the L2 can run at synchronous speeds. But but the gear pump, especially at larger sizes, needs a gear reducer between the motor and the pump. If space is an issue, the L2 pump can be the pump to go with. These images on the side, you can see that the pump is directly coupled to the motor, that's the Lystrix L2, and then the gear pump down here has a gear box in between the pump and the motor uh, that is necessary in these cases. Many terminal operators add a VFD for enhanced unloading capability. Being a positive displacement pump, by changing the speed, you will change the flow of the unit. Another feature of the L2 pump package is the ability to run the pump in reverse rotation. When rail car or barge is empty, the operator can run the pump in reverse to empty the suction line. This gives you an image of um, a rail car unloading. Uh, you can see the pump here, okay, with the insulated line, and also we have a BFD for this particular application. Okay, um, now I'd like to get into the benefits of the L2. Maybe the, the main benefit or you can say advantage of the L2 pump, is the ability to handle lower temperature product, which allows the user to spend less money and time heating the rail cars, and allows the user to unload the rail car quicker. We are told that gear pump manufacturers recommend that fluid be at a minimum of 275 degrees Fahrenheit before pumping. The unique design and powerful suction capability of the L2 let you pump asphalt at 250 degrees F. We have even had customers tell us they pump the asphalt at even lower temperatures. Cold slugs in the suction line, which we had talked about earlier as being a big challenge, is not an issue entering the inlet due to the internal flow path. When we showed you earlier the flow path of the fluid through the L2, we talked about the turn of the fluid from the suction inlet to the back of the pump. 
This turn actually elongates the slug and enables it to flow easily through the screws. The gear pump, on the other hand, has the flow path direct into the gears, which could cause the teeth of the gears to break or even snap the drive shaft. We got a question in, and I thought that uh, I would interrupt you, John, just sure. to uh, reiterate something. Um, Mark is asking if you said the screw pump can be ran in reverse. Yes. Yeah. Um, the what happens sometimes is when you're unloading a rail car, for instance, the um, there's fluid in the line. Um, through the VF, some VFDs, if you get it that way, or the, some units have the capability of reversing the uh, rotation of the motor so that you could actually uh, pump the fluid that's left in the line back into the, uh, the tank or, or back into the truck or whatever you're unloading. So what it does is it clears the line out for you. That's okay, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, at times when the pump has been sitting idle and the operator goes to start the pump, they might have an issue that a plug has formed in the discharge line. This also can be caused if the heat tracing fails on the discharge pi piping. The L2 has the ability to pump plugs out of the discharge line without damaging the pump or motor by using the hand wheel on the relief valve. Now the hand wheel enables you to open the pressure valve up to 25% of the designed flow of the pump. If you have an 1800 RPM motor running a VFD, you can use the VFD to lower the speed to 25% or in the 1800 RPM case, it would go down to 450 RPM. So at this point, you have 100% of the asphalt recirculating from the pressure relief valve back to the pump. So there's no flow going through the, the piping on the discharge side. You then can use the hand wheel to slowly divert the flow back through the pump discharge and safely push the plug through the line without causing any damage to the system. Earlier, we talked about the feature that the L2 has a balanced rotor set which eliminates internal thrust. The benefit of this design is that it eliminates the need for wear plates inside the pump. This also causes less maintenance for the L2 pump as compared to the gear pump, which uses wear plates that need to be maintained. Okay, some of the benefits of the pump package are that the units can run at synchronous speeds. This eliminates the need for a gear reducer. Remember, the gear reducer is something else to maintain and creates a larger footprint for the gear pump package. The unit also works very well with a VFD for complete speed and therefore flow control. When using packing, the packing area is only subject to inlet pressure. This limits the amount of leakage through the packing. The unit has the option to use a mechanical seal with a ring channel heating. This allows you to heat the seal, which enables better lubrication. You will find that the L2 is very quiet and excellent suction lift character and has excellent suction lift characteristics. Lastly, the ductile iron or steel casing eliminates the prep the potential of the casing cracking due to thermal shock. Okay, next I'd just like to go through a couple case studies, uh, just a quick review. Uh, the first has to do with time and saving money. The terminal on this particular terminal sh shown here unloads zero pen asphalt with a viscosity over 9,500 centistokes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. In the past, they had problems with gear pumps. The L2 pumps colder fluids and higher viscosity products. It took significantly less time and money heating the product and greatly improving the terminal's throughput as well as saved the money. 
we were advised by the facility that using the L2 pumps resulted in a 75% reduction in an unloading time, which definitely saves money. The second case study was again a customer that had used gear pumps in the past. They had gone through quite a bit of maintenance due to issues with wear plates. Because the L2 is hydraulically balanced, they did not have this issue anymore. They were able to pump the fluid at a lower temperature and did not have any further issues with the asphalt slugs. They also liked the idea that the motors would run on standard speed, which eliminated the need for the gear reducer. The pictures that we show here, this was actually done, the pictures were taken during the original installation 15 years ago. And these are pictures uh, that were taken recently, I guess over this past winter, you see there's snow on the ground, of the same pumps um, that are still in use today over the past 15 years. Right. One of the things I quickly wanted to go through too was just um, if you do have a, a request for quote, if you want to get information, um, if you do go to our website, which is listed up in the right hand corner there, uh, almost every page has a button you could hit for a request for quote. Uh, basically, as most of you know, um, you know, we would need the flow rate, the suction pressure, discharge pressure. Uh, the temperature of the fluid and the viscosity, uh, you know, to be able to give you a proper quotation, uh, but we would be happy to do it um, and, you know, be glad to do it. Uh, one of the other things, too, that I wanted to stress is just that we currently have stock of product. One of the things that we are committed to this year is to make sure that we have product available to our customers, and uh, please note that pumps are available and you know would love to work with you on those okay uh, this picture is kind of interesting this is uh, our largest ever l2 asphalt pump which came in earlier this week uh, we're currently building it up with a motor and base plate now in our facility uh, this is a 270 millimeter unit uh, i think it it I said earlier the flow rate is around 2,000 gallons per minute. This does a little more than 2,000 gallons per minute. Um, right now, the picture shows uh, Chris Rogers, Tim Lebo, and Nancy Contreras, who are three of our sales engineers inspecting the pump. Okay. Uh, service always needs to be uh, mentioned. Uh, we're very proud of our support and service team. Uh, parts are in stock. Uh, we do on-site and in-house repairs. Uh, we do startup commissioning and operation and maintenance training, and we are always available to do inspections and maintenance and service contracts. Uh, we are also starting doing virtual service. Um, you know, so you know we want to work with you, especially with what's going on with the pandemic, and uh, to give you the best service possible. Uh, we actually, too, in service are running a summer special. Uh, we're doing free disassembly, inspection, and report with a repair order or a free return delivery of repaired pump, um, which is running this summer. And, you know, we would be happy to work with you on that. Okay. Uh, so um, here we have with the our contact information. And uh, let's go back to Kim. Hi, I'm back. Um, we do have more questions, but I think we are going to uh, table them and answer them uh, um, uh, each person uh, personally because we are really over and I thank you for staying with us uh, for the 25, 30 minutes. Um, here's something uh, also to keep in mind, even though we're not traveling because of COVID, um, we are hosting Lunch and Learns. And we're also hosting uh, popcorn and pump talks. And we actually send you lunch or send you popcorn. So reach out to our sales engineers and they'll set something up. And of course, again, this is over video. Um, you'll also notice in the handout section that there are two handouts. 
One is an asphalt brochure, so it will review what we've gone over today and the presentation that John gave. So you can print that out and have the information available to you. So I want to thank you, John and myself. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And you. uh, your attention, your participation, a little bit of uh, technical difficulties that we yes. had at the very Sorry beginning. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we look forward to working with you. So please give us a call uh, for any of your needs. It's been our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys.